Good afternoon and evening, everyone. This is the Game Sage here, ready to bring you our next Game Maker Studio tutorial. And today I'm going to be covering one of the more interesting topics when it comes to game programming, and that is collisions. A lot of people despise collisions and have hundreds of different ways of doing collisions depending on whatever engine or programming tool they're using. Uh, but Game Maker pr makes it pretty straightforward and... Um, you know, it's pretty cutthroat. There's maybe only a handful of ways to do collisions in Game Maker Studio, and it really does make it, in my opinion, pretty simple to do. I mean, there are a few things that are confusing about it, but for the most part, it's not too bad. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, but just to show you real quick, before I do anything, let's just see what we did in our last video. So here we have Link. Um, if I press the left arrow key, he moves left. If I press right, he moves right. If I press up, he moves up, and if I press the down arrow key, he moves down. And that's all pretty much we did in our last video. Now, today, before I get into collisions, I kind of want to redo how we did the movement system. And the reason for that, and I kind of touched upon it in the last video, is having multiple events or triggers is not a good way to go about programming in your game, uh, in Game Maker Studio. And the reason for this is, later on when you have hundreds and hundreds of things going on in your game, if you have millions of triggers, you know, left, up, right, down, let's say you had one for shooting, jumping, you know, this can be a nightmare in coding, dealing with uh, bugs. So if you run into a glitch later on where your player is getting stuck in a wall or something crazy is happening, going through these things is going to confuse the hell out of you, whereas... If all four of these were combined into, let's say, like, one coding block, you probably would be able to find the problem much quicker. So that's what we're going to do first. Um, so for you to understand what I'm going to be doing or how we're going to be condensing this, you have to understand how the main game loop works. So what does that mean? Well, let me delete all four of these events first to start off with because we don't need them anymore so delete the right arrow key delete the down arrow key so if we go to add event you're gonna notice um, a trigger here called the step event uh, ignore our begin step and end step for now all we really need uh, for these next couple tutorials is the just a generic step event so if you remember let me just hit OK and go to our room test room in my last video I mentioned that our room width and height is 1280 by 720 but then I also briefly touched on the speed and I said that this is just the frames per second that our game is running in so currently it's set to 30 frames per second uh, for the purpose of this tutorial just to make things run a little smoother let's set this to 60 frames per second so what exactly is a frame per second a frame per second is how quickly things are rendered and processed in your game. And that includes code. Oh, well, code that just happened to disappear. So if I go back to add event, step event, step, what this means is because my game is running in 60 frames per second, that means this specific trigger or event means that whatever actions I put in here is going to run approximately 60 times in a second. And that's basically what the step event is. So if I go, just to demonstrate this, if I go to the control tab and add this line that says execute code. And let's just put, uh, from stemming from my last tutorial, x equals x plus 1. Uh, and let's just run the game. So... The game is running at 60 frames per second, and look at that. Link is moving one frame 60 times a second, so it's working. So what this means is the x equals x plus 1, this code, is running 60 times in a second, which we just saw in the game when I used the step event. So using this uh, way of thinking, we can use the step event to do everything we need the player to do instead of having you know if the left arrow key is being pressed if the right arrow key is pressed up down all this stuff 
well, why have all these events when you can just have the game continuously loop 60 times a second? And then inside of here, check if we're pressing the left arrow key or the right arrow key or whatever. So how do we do that in coding? Well, first thing you got to understand when it comes to coding is how coding works. And that is, no matter what programming language you're using, whether it's GameMaker or... C++ or anything, all programming languages have the same philosophy of thinking, and that is pretty much this. If whatever you put in these parentheses, so let's say in the example of our character moving, if a player or if uh, you're pressing down on right arrow key, close parentheses, uh, open brackets, close brackets, and in between these brackets, I'm just going to put move player to the right. Now, this, obviously, if we were to run the game, is going to give us an error because the computer doesn't understand what this means. But all programming languages work the same way of thinking in the sense that if X, then do Y. And what that means is if this part or that this line of code is true or if whatever's in these parentheses is true, uh, perform whatever is between these curly brackets. And that's how most programming languages work. It's the same ideology and the same way of thinking. So unfortunately, the computer doesn't understand what this means. So we have to put it, this in a way that GameMaker Studio and our computer can understand. So how do we do this? Well, I'm gonna just going to type in two or three lines of code here and then explain what this does. That's the best way to, to start this thing up. So if, close uh, open parentheses, keyboard check, uh, open parentheses again, VK underscore right, close parentheses, close parentheses, open bracket, x is equal to x plus 3. Close bracket. What did I just do here? Well, this, can, you, this is pretty, if you just read it, it can kind of make sense. The x equals x plus 3, you already know what that means. That means it's moving our character 3 frames to the right every 60 times in a second. Because we're a game of 60 frames a second. So keyboard check VK right. Keyboard check is a built-in function in GameMaker Studio that basically says it's checking to see if you're pressing a certain key on your keyboard. And then whatever we have in the parentheses here is what key. VK just stands for virtual keyboard. And this happens to be the right key. So there's other options like VK underscore. Look at all these options. Down, enter, F10, there's a million different options we can do uh, for different keys on our keyboard. So we're just going to do VK right. So this is just, again, a built-in function, and it's checking if we're pressing down the right arrow key in our keyboard, move the character or move this object three frames to the right every, uh, or 60, uh, every uh, frame of our game, um, which means it'll run 60 times a second, this code if we're pressing the right arrow key. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So using this philosophy now, we can code in the rest of our um, keyboard checks. So let's just do that real quick. If keyboard check VK underscore left, well, open bracket, X equals X minus three, close bracket. And all this abbreviating I'm doing is just uh, the way I code, and it's neat. It looks neater when you're looking at code this way. Um, so that's just the way I do it. If keyboard check, VK underscore up. Well, you guys remember what we got to do here. Y equals Y minus 3. Close bracket. And then we just have if keyboard check. VK underscore down, open bracket, Y equals Y plus three, and then enter, close bracket. So 
if we run the game with that code I just typed in, would you look at that? We can move the character just like we could before. And we condense that all into one step event. So it's performing this code 60 times a second. And it keeps checking. Is he pressing the right arrow key? Is he pressing the left arrow key? You know, it keeps looping through all this over and over again to check if these conditions are true. So that's basic of coding. So now that we know this, uh, we can move on to our next level and what this tutorial is actually supposed to be about, or what it's going to be about, and that is collisions. So, first thing is first, folks. Um, let's forget the coding for a second. I want to add another sprite into our game. So, right-click sprites, create sprite. We're going to call this one SPR underscore uh underscore block we'll just call it that for right now that sounds reasonable load sprite and i have an already made sprite here block and all this is if you want to look at it is just basically what we're going to use as the floors and the walls for this tutorial for our player to collide with so spr underscore block click the center Oops, sorry. Click out of here first. Make sure you click the center button so it's the origins in the middle. Hit OK. And now we have that. Now we just need to create an object for it. So create object. OBJ underscore block. And set its sprite to the SPR block. Okay. Hit OK. That was just my door. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Hit OK, and now we have the sprite block and the object block, which references the sprite, just like we did with our player back in the first tutorial. Let's go to our room now and just add some of these blocks into the game and create a floor and the wall. So let's go to objects. Make sure over here where it says object to add with the left mouse. Let's make sure we select our object block. Because we're going to add a few blocks into our game, as I said. Okay, this is just a 32 by 32 block. Now, you can start putting these in the game like this, but it can be a kind of a nightmare uh, doing it that way, to put one at a time. So, if you press Control and Shift at the same time, you can actually drag a bunch of these. So, let's do that. See? You can just draw a bunch of them out. Uh, I'm not the best drawer in the world here, so... I have a few little errors here and there. Oops. Just draw. I'm kind of just like randomly drawing here. Uh, no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. But just kind of how I want to do it. So we got a basic floor here. Uh, let me delete that. And then let me just create one down here for purposes that I'll explain. Okay, that's a mess, isn't it? Uh, let me create one more thing here, a wall like that, and we'll create a smaller wall here, uh, just so I can demonstrate other uh, left and right collision here. Uh, here let me do that. Uh, I mean the left and right walls, when you're colliding into the walls from the left and the right side. Okay, so this isn't the greatest level ever, but it'll work. So that's our room. Hit OK. Let's just run the game to see what it looks like. So currently we have our character and it looks like we have a bunch of blocks we put. We can move left, right, up and down. And oh no, we can move through it! Well that's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> Clearly nothing is colliding with the character right now. And that's really what this tutorial is going to be. We're going to make it so we can collide with this stuff. And we're also going to add gravity into the game and get rid of the up and down movement because, well, in a side scroller, you can't just move up and down. That wouldn't make sense, right? So let's get it started. We have our wonderful room here. We have all the blocks, but right now, can't do anything. We're just moving through them. But we got a little basic level thing going now, so that's great. So let's go back to our object player, because this is where all our coding is going to be going on. And we already have the step event. Let's go back into the execute piece of code. So first thing is first. We don't need the up movement. OK, 
okay? Because we're not going to be moving up, and we don't need the down movement because, you know, it doesn't make sense in a side-scroller game. You're not going to be able to move up and down, right? Okay. So, um, let's leave this alone for now. Um, again, let's just test this one more time, run the game. Right now, we should be able to, we can no longer move up and down, which is correct. We can move left or right. So what do we need to do now? We need to add gravity so that he falls down. Uh, we need to add collision so that he collides with the ground. Make sure he's on the ground and the walls. And that's that. So let's go back to our code now. Before I go to the step event, we need to initialize what's called variables or a few variables. So if you go to add event and we go to create, this is a new thing I'm introducing now. What is the create event? The create event simply means when this object player is created, perform whatever codes we put, whatever actions we put in here. So let's go to the code, execute code. So unlike the step event, whatever code we execute in here, whatever we put in here is only going to run once. So what's going to happen is when the game starts, this code is only going to run one time. And then it's going to go to the step event, and that code is going to continuously run over and over again. So this code is never going to run again. Just one time when the object is created. All right. So I'm going to initialize a few variables. Um, now, what I'm going to do first is a comment. And I'm just going to call it establish variables. What is this green text I just typed out? This is just a comment block. Um, this doesn't affect the game in any way. This is kind of just notes for yourself in the game in programming. So, you know, if you want to put moving character to the right, whatever. This is just a note for yourself. The the compiler and the game ignores it completely. This is just a reference thing that Game Maker allows you to do, and other programming languages allow you to do. Uh, so you can always basically reference the game the code later and know exactly what you're doing so we're just establishing a few variables here um hsp equals zero vsp equals zero and grav equals one now this hsp is going to stand for the player's horizontal speed now why didn't i just put a variable like h speed or v speed i'll explain that in a second let me just put back to zero okay so if i did h speed well there's no such thing as horizontal speed is too long of a word okay so if i did h speed v speed and gravity you'll notice that they highlighted a red this is built in variables that are already saved for game maker studio so we don't want to use these because this will affect the game in like wacky ways. And we kind of want to code the um, the player's horizontal speed by ourself and the vertical speed by ourself and the gravity by ourself. We don't want the built-in functions or the built-in uh, weird programming, physics programming to take over our player movement. So I'm just using HSP, VSP, and Grav. For those three terms so hsp stands for horizontal speed vsp vertical speed and grav gravity and i'm setting the uh this is just defaulting so i'm creating these two variables and i'm defaulting them to zero so horizontal speed is zero vertical speed is zero grav which is going to stand for uh one our gravity on our character i'm setting to one and i'll explain all that in a second okay so let's go to our step event. Uh, if we initialize our variables, we're done here. We have these three things initialized, so we can now use them in our step event, these three variables. So let's go to our step event. All right. Now, first thing I want to do, let's just bring this down for a second. A nice little comment here is we want to handle keyboard input and gravity. So the very first thing we're going to be doing in this block of code is, and I'm just going to comment it. This is my style of commenting. You guys can do however you want. It just makes things a little cleaner for me to see. So exactly what it says, we're, first thing we got to do is 
check all the keyboard input, making sure we're pressing the left arrow key, the right arrow key, the space bar, which is going to be the jumping. And then we're doing gravity. So first thing we want to do is uh, we want to... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Set to move right. So I can just do the set to move right. Take this right code I have here. Just put it right underneath it. Now we don't want to move the character to the right way right away because we have a lot of other stuff we got to do, like checking collisions and everything. So this is why I created <clears throat> the HSP variable. So instead of moving the character, you know right right away as soon as you press the right arrow key i actually want to store that into the hsp variable we created so hsp equals three which is the you know moving him three frames to the right so i'm just setting the the horizontal speed variable we created to three that's all we're doing and to make things a little cleaner so that my code doesn't get completely congested i like to this is just my way of styling it the open brackets and close brackets, whenever there's only one line of code like this, like I'm just doing one thing, I like to just put it all in one line. So I just put the open bracket, HSP equals 3, and then the close bracket. So that's when we're pressing the right arrow key. So that's set to move right. And then we got to do the opposite, which is uh, da -da, set to move left. And I can just do this very easily. Just grab this whole line of code here. Copy. Paste. Just change this to instead of VK right, VK left. And instead of HSP equals 3, HSP equals negative 3. So now whenever we press the right arrow key, it's not going to move us to the right right away, but it's going to set this horizontal speed variable to 3. And whenever we're pressing the left arrow key, it's going to set the horizontal speed variable to negative 3. Now, this next line of code is going to be a little bit confusing. And that is set to stop moving. And I'm just going to type it all out first and then explain it because it can be rather confusing. So if not keyboard check vk underscore left and not keyboard this is a long one check vk underscore right or keyboard underscore check vk underscore left and Keyboard check VK underscore right. And then I'm going to do HSP equals zero. Holy crap. What did I just do? Well, let's read this out. Um, these are called and statements and these are called or statements. What this means is if not the explanation point stands for not that means if we're not pressing the left arrow key okay and we're not pressing the right arrow key so these are these two conditions are paired together so if we're not pressing the left arrow key and we're not pressing the left uh if i'm sorry if we're not pressing the left arrow key on our keyboard and we're not pressing the right arrow key that means a uh, horizontal speed would equal zero or if we're if we're pressing both the left arrow keys and right arrow keys hsp equals zero so that means in order for this line of code to be executed uh or in order to our horizontal speed to be set to zero either this line of code these two things have to be true or these two things have to be true i hope that makes sense but basically it's if we're pressing the if we're not pressing either the the left and right arrow keys or if we're pressing them both at the same time set our speed to zero because you know it's nothing's happening and the reason we do this these two codes is so that when we let go of the left and arrow keys 
that it stops moving and so that you know it the game it's like a safety check making sure that when you're not moving that you're not moving essentially so that's a little bit of a confusing line of code if you have any more questions on it you know feel free to comment down below ask away Whew, that was a mouthful all right so moving on Okay, so now that we've set the character's horizontal speed, depending on if he's pressing the left arrow key, the right arrow key, or no arrow key, we can go ahead and start implementing gravity and collision into our game. So the next thing we're going to do is determine if we need to apply gravity to the character or not. The, meaning, we need to find out if he's in the air, and if he's in the air, we're going to push him to, towards the ground. And if he's not in the air, that would mean he's on the ground. So first thing I'm going to do is check to see if player is on the ground. Okay. And how do we do this? Well, Game Maker Studio for Collision has a function called uh, place underscore meeting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a line of code and then explain it. If uh, place underscore meeting open parentheses x comma y plus one comma obj underscore block and do whatever's in these parent uh, in these brackets so what this means is place meeting is a way of checking for collision so if i pull up this little picture drawing i did here real quick so what this means is if x and y which applies to if you remember X and Y in this case is just the character's X and Y position. So if his X position and one pixel below him, so X, Y and one pixel below him is him is on top of the object block. So if he's intersecting, if one pixel below him is intersecting with the object block, that means we're on the ground. So basically if he's here, and this were to be checked, it's going to say, oh, wait a minute, one pixel below him is the ground, is intersecting with this. So perform whatever code is in here. So what code do we want to put in there? Well, vertical speed or VSP is equal to zero. Because if he's on the ground, we don't want gravity, we don't want to keep pushing him through the ground. We only want to push him towards the ground when he's in, in the air. So basically, again, this collision check is just checking if the player is on the ground or if one pixel below him, is, there's a ground object there, and then perform this code, VSP equals zero. So I hope that makes sense. It might be a little confusing to understand this place meeting thing off the bat, um, but we'll definitely touch upon it more as we go through this tutorial in future tutorials. So vertical speed equals zero. Now there's one more thing we want to do while we're on the ground, and that's simple. Simply this. If we're on the ground, we're gonna want to allow our player uh to place to press the space bar to jump. Because you know, all Zelda games, the player, you know, Zelda 2, the player can jump up. So what I want to check now is okay, we know he's on the ground at this point. So while he's on the ground, we're gonna want to allow him to jump. So what I'm going to do is another check within a check. I'm going to do if keyboard underscore check underscore pressed, and I'll explain that in a second, vk underscore space, close parentheses, close parentheses. Then I'm going to do vsp is equal to negative 12, uh, semicolon, close bracket. And then that's it. So what does this say? This says we know he's on the ground at this point because we're inside of this condition. So his vertical speed zero. He's no longer moving through the ground. And since he's on the ground, we are going to check if the space key on our keyboard is pressed. If it's pressed, allow the player to jump up 12 pixels. And then because he's going to be no longer on the ground, the next time this code goes through, he's not going to be allowed to uh, jump again.
But here's the thing. Here's why we do key, uh, keyboard check. And I typed it wrong. Sorry. Here's why we do keyboard check pressed and not just the normal keyboard check. Because what happens is pressed means if we've pressed the space bar key, he jumps up 12 units. But if you remember, when we're doing the left, moving left and moving right in a normal keyboard check, he continuously moves left, continuously moves right until we let go of the button. Pressed means we press the button and he is going to perform this, so he's going to jump uh, 12 pixels up. But then for us to, for this to physically perform again or to go through that code again, we actually have to let go of the keyboard first. So keyboard press means you pressed it, it goes up, but then you have to let go of it before you can actually press it again. So it's a little confusing, um, but basically the best way to explain it is if we just left it as a regular keyboard check, what would happen is this line of code might execute multiple times and you start flying up in the air instead of just uh, you know jumping once until until uh, you press it again until you let go and then have to press it again so a little bit confusing I know but just trust me on this keyboard pressed so that you have to actually physically let go of the space bar before you can jump again alright um, so now that that's done all we have to do is else an else case and then open pra uh, parentheses uh, brackets close brackets and what this means now is so far if the player was on the ground we performed all this stuff in between these brackets so we set his his uh, vertical speed to zero and then we allowed the player to jump well else case means that we know that player if I mean a uh, player is in the air apply gravity so these, in between these brackets were if he's on the ground perform all this stuff else case it means if he's not on the ground perform whatever's in these brackets on the else so if he's not on the ground he's in the air we want to apply gravity on the character and to do this um, it's very very simple all we're gonna do is VSP plus equals grav now if you remember let me just go to my create event real quick. We set grav equal to 1 in our create event. So what this means, if I go back to the step event, is if the player was in the air, which now we know, you know, if he's not on the ground, that means he's in the air. So if he's in the air, we are adding 1 to his vertical speed every frame of our game. So if he's in the air, the next frame of game... He's going to be pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, you know, at a further, further rate because this continuously is adding one to whatever our current vertical speed is. So the next frame of our game, he's only going to, you know, go down a certain amount of blocks. So he's going to continuously be pushed to the ground while he's in the air. I hope this makes sense. If not, you know, definitely feel free to ask questions on it. But basically, every frame of our game, 60 times a second, we're pushing him towards the ground at a rate of, you know, applying a gravity force of one every frame all right so now that we've done that all that's left to do is the collision we need to determine you know if he's moving to the right if there's a wall here so we can stop him from moving if he's moving to the left if there's a wall here so we can stop him from moving and if he was jumping if there's a wall above him so he can not jump through the wall and if there's a ground below him even though we've kind of done a basic collision to check if he's on the ground we still have to do a collision to prevent him from you know just a, a safety thing just in case he would ever uh, fall through the ground or, you know it just prevents him from falling through the ground so next what we're gonna do is we're going to do our collision collision checks and movement and what I mean by movement is, to this point, you got to realize that we haven't really been moving our character because we haven't been uh, messing with the uh, player's X and Y values. We've just been setting vertical, you know, the these variables we created, the VSP and HSP, we've just been setting them to what they should be. So we have to later on apply these variables to our act actual X and Y. Um... So what we're going to do now is collision checks first in movement. Uh, we're going to start with our horizontal collision. 
And I'm just going to type in a really confusing line, a few lines of code here, then I'm going to explain it. So bear with me. Let me just type this out first. If place underscore meeting x plus hsp comma y obj solid open brackets close brackets and again i'll explain this in a second let me just type this all out while not place meeting x plus sign hsp comma y comma obj underscore block we're gonna do x plus equals sign oops i kind of like that plus equals sign hsp da, da, da. hsp equals zero wow what did i do here now this is probably of everything i do in the tutorial this is going to be the most confusing thing here this this little section of code so let's explain it line by line so what this is checking now is let's say the player was on the ground here already and he's moving right you know you're you're pressing the right arrow key he's moving right what this is checking now is if x so if the character is x position plus his horizontal speed so plus three you know if he's moving right the next frame of the game he'd move right another three pixels so if his x position plus three pixels would have him colliding with the wall we want to prevent him from colliding to the wall so what we're doing then is we want to move him. you know like if he's here and the next three pixels would be him on top of the wall we want to move him while basically we want to move him one pixel at a time towards the wall until he's against the wall so that's what this line of code does. It's checking while one pixel, because uh, sign, uh, while not place meeting, x plus sign HSP. So sign HSP just means all this does, the sign function in GameMaker, it's either going to return a 1 or a negative 1. So all it's doing is it's checking, is HSP variable negative or positive? So it means are we moving in the to the right or are we moving to the left against the wall so this is kinda of handling both collisions at the same time so this is just checking while basically there's a free space one space to the right of you move x plus equals sine hespa so while one space to the right of you is free and there's no wall there x plus equals sine hespa move one space to the right or to the left depending on if there's a wall to the left of you or to the right of you. So that's quite a bit confusing, but basically we're checking to see if um, if you were to move the right. So the first thing is if X plus HSP. So if three pixels to the right of you is a wall, we are moving one pixel at a time to the right or to the left, depending on which way you're headed. That's what the sign handles. And it's going to keep moving one pixel at a time, looping this while thing over and over again. It's going to go here. It's one sign. It's, so in other words, are we on the wall? Is there a wall one space to the right? No, move one space to the right. Is there a wall one space to the right? No, we'll move one space to the right. Is there a wall one space to the right? No, move one space to the right. And it's going to do this until we're against the wall and we can't move anymore. And then once that's done and we can't move anymore, it's going to execute this line of code. And it's going to say, okay, well, now we're done moving. So horizontal speed equals zero, do not move anymore. So I've kind of killed these lines to death, but I'll just explain it again one more time. Um, if three pixels to the right of us is a wall, move one space at a time as close to the wall as we can until we can no longer move or until there's no free space to the right. Once there's no free space to the right, set our horizontal speed to zero. This is probably the most confusing thing I'm going to be teaching or explaining in the tutorial for you know for a long time so definitely feel free to ask questions on this um, but eventually you should understand it okay so that's our horizontal collision and just like that in these lines of codes we've set our horizontal collision from moving to the left and to the right because the sign function handles both right and left movement so now our horizontal collision should be set so all that's left to do 
once we have our horizontal collision set is basically uh, carry through with the movement with the horizontal movement or basically comma move to the right or I'm sorry move horizontally so all we have to do now is apply our HSP variable to our X position so X plus equals HSP which means that remember if our HSP is 3 that means now well if our HSP is 3 well we're gonna move every time this you know we're gonna move 3 pixels to the right or if it's negative 3 we're gonna move 3 pixels to the left depending on which direction key we're pressing so that is our horizontal collision now all that's left to do is our vertical collision and this is going to be really simple because all we have to do is basically take everything we did with our horizontal collision and just do it for our y value so if place underscore meeting x comma y plus sign VSP because now it's the vertical speed we're checking obj underscore solid uh, I'm sorry obj block and it's the same with here I don't know why I put solid obj block that would have been an error okay and then we gotta do the same thing we did for the horizontal collision and that's while while we're not colliding with the ground or the roof basically while not place meeting x plus oops x comma y plus sign vsp obj underscore block so while we're not colliding with the roof or the floor we want to move as close to the roof as or floor as possible do, do, I don't want to do this let's do this y plus equals sine VSP let's just bring this line up okay and then do, 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 VSP is equal to zero. So this just does the same exact thing we did for the horizontal collision except for vertical. And this what this says is okay. It, if um, you know we're moving up, you know if there's a wall above us, move as close to the wall as we can, and prevent him from moving through the wall. And then set his uh, vertical speed to zero. And then the same with this, if there's a floor below them, move as close to the floor as possible, then set the vertical speed to zero. And again, keep in mind, even though, like, let's say we jumped on the roof here, we set his vertical speed to zero, but then remember, it's going to loop through this code again and apply gravity. Because remember, well, vertical speed might be zero, but he's still in the air, so apply gravity is going to fall back to the ground. So then, all that's left to do, that we did that, is basically just the same thing we did with the X position which is carry through with the vertical movement or or basically let's rephrase that that carries through with the horizontal movement. we're not moving vertically yeah so carry through with vertical movement if any because we're not really going to be moving up and down. The gravity is going to handle that. So really what this should be is just set set player's Y position. Or carry through with Y position. And all we're going to do is Y plus equals VSP. And we're done. That's everything we needed to do. And uh, what was this taking me? 20 minutes so this is going to be a long ass video like a 45 minute video uh, but now if you run our game we can go ahead and test this thing make sure everything compiles and there's no errors and it's not working it's not working so I did something wrong see this is when we have to debug a little bit
what did I do wrong? Let's find out. Let's see. What did I do wrong? This is debugging, and this is why you always want to have everything in like code here because you can spend so much time trying to figure out what you did wrong and you'll never figure it out. So I am not, it's not working right now. I'm not moving left. Okay, everyone, sorry about that. I actually found the bug and it's pretty easy to overlook and can cause quite a bit of issues. As, I, as you saw when I ran the game, I couldn't even move around. <clears throat> so it's pretty simple error and that's if you check on my horizontal collision, collision, I'm checking to see, okay, if three pixels to the right is a wall, <clears throat> and then perform, you know, move as close to the wall as possible one frame at a time. Well, here, I accidentally did, I'm checking the vertical collision, I did, <clears throat> if one pixel, instead of doing, if th you know, if the vertical speed below him is the ground or above him is the roof, I did if one pixel above him, because I put sign here, <clears throat> so I did if one pixel above or below him is a roof or the ground, and that's wrong. So this should just be Y plus VSP. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jesus, I got something stuck in my throat. So now it's going to check to see if whatever his vertical speed below him is a ground or above him is the roof perform, you know, move as close to the roof or ground as possible one pixel at a time. Here I was just checking, I had, um, you know, the sign thing in there. So I was just checking if one pixel above him is a roof or one pixel below him. And that's not the correct way to do it. So this should fix the problem. Let's go ahead and run our game and test it. And now we should be able to move around without any issues. Okay, so not perfect. You can see that he's still not perfectly against the floor. And that's an easy fix. Um, but now... You can see, okay, well, we can freely, freely jump around, move. Um, you know, gravity brings us to the ground. And we could jump. And then let's try jumping down to the platform below us. See, fall down. So it kind of works. It's still a little glitchy. We can't fit through there. No. <laughs> I have to redesign that. But what you could do to make this a little bit cleaner is if you go to the sprite player you're gonna see something that says precise collision checking let's just hit OK on that and run the game again see if that does anything sure enough there you go as you can see now um, it's actually more precise it looks a lot better and can we see if I can fit through here look at that we can even fit through this little crawl space here isn't that great? So collision now seems to be working good. We can jump around. We can move around. Everything seems to be interacting like it should be. We can even jump to our deaths. All great stuff. So this precise collision checking is not always the best thing to use because it uses a lot of memory. Uh, one way around this, instead of using this, is if I go to edit sprite. If I were to get rid of all this white space around the character, and I forget how to do this now. Let me see if I remember how. Uh, I don't remember how. But basically, there's a way to remove all this white space around them, and then the collision will be more precise. But if I were to remove all that white space around them, <clears throat> then I wouldn't need to have uh, precise collision checking. So for now, let's just leave it like that. Our system seems to be working well. Um, you know, we are against the floor, against the wall. Everything seems to be going good. So this was quite a complicated tutorial, and it took me a while to explain, a long, long while. Um, so in my next tutorial, we're actually going to animate our character, and we're going to flip the sprite. You know, if we're moving left, he's actually going to move. You're going to see the character animate the way he should, and not just be a static, you know, one static sprite moving everywhere. So... Animations we're going to cover next time. As you saw, look at that. Look at these bugs. There's still a few bugs around here. And this is all stuff that you can work out. See, so there's still quite a few bugs. Um, and it only seems to be on the... 
on the right side so little things we can work out but we'll get that all taken care of i hope this tutorial was helpful it carried on for quite a while um but yeah that's all the time we have for today if you have any questions please feel free to ask below and i will see you guys for our next tutorial thanks for watching i will see you guys later